My first day of work in front of the camera came 24 hours later. It was a scene in which I am walking purposefully through a corridor of the Enterprise, and I pass a turbo lift whose door opens. Out steps Commander Riker, who speaks to me. I look at him, but do not reply, walking on. Cut. When we completed the first take, Jonathan shouted out, Wow! So that must be what they call British face acting! The whole set laughed. Now, I know of actors who would have been outraged by such insouciance from a lower-ranking officer, or at least an actor playing one. But I joined in the laughter, and it was genuine, because Jonathan's ribbing made me feel included. I was so scared and outside of my comfort zone, and I desperately needed the comic relief. But I could be a severe bastard as well. My castmates doubled over in laughter when they flubbed multiple takes, and in rehearsals, they sometimes ad-libbed things that weren't in the script to make their lines funnier. My experiences at the Royal Shakespeare Company and the National Theatre had been intense and serious. Naturally, we enjoyed a bit of levity, but in general, we knew our time was limited and we didn't fool around. On the TNG set, I grew angry with the conduct of my peers, and that's when I called that meeting in which I lectured the cast for goofing off and responded to Denise Crosby's We've Got to Have Some Fun Sometimes, Patrick, comment by saying, We are not here, Denise, to have fun! In retrospect, everyone, me included, finds this story hilarious. But in the moment when the cast erupted in hysterics at my pompous declaration, I didn't handle it well. I didn't enjoy being laughed at. I stormed off the set and into my trailer, slamming the door. After I had been sulking for a while, I heard a gentle knock. I opened the door to find Jonathan and Brent standing there. Hey, come on, let's talk about this, Jonathan said. They were so wise and tactful in educating me, especially given that I was the senior actor in the cast. Everything's okay. People respect you. But I think you misjudge the situation here, Brent said. He and Jonathan acknowledged that, yes, there was too much goofing around and that it needed to be dialed back, but they also made it clear how off-putting it was and not a case study in good leadership for me to try to resolve the matter by lecturing and scolding the cast. I had failed to read the room, imposing RSC behavior on people accustomed to the ways of episodic television, which was, after all, what we were shooting. Over the years, I have learned so much from my Star Trek friends about acting for television and simply being a good colleague. Jonathan Frakes was principally responsible for this, and it's no surprise that he evolved into an excellent director. His manner on set is always relaxed, with a twinkle in his eye. He so enjoys the work, even as he goes about it seriously. I did my best to emulate his approach because I recognized that one of my problems was that I had an anxious desire not only to work seriously, but to be seen as working seriously. It took me that entire first season to relax and thaw out from being an uptight Englishman to a loose, amiable colleague given to quasi-American behavior. But bit by bit, I got there. Chance had thrown me into a company that was as generous and funny as it was talented. Our mutual respect grew over time and into friendship and ultimately a feeling of family. And this feeling 